Hey Christy, Racer Rob down here at Integrity Auto Care. I'm going to give you your update on your 1994 Ford Ranger. Got a cute little truck with electrical problems. Uh, I'm going to call them gremlins because honestly I'm a straight shooter. This has got some electrical problems but the good news is we can get them all repaired and uh, I like to do things fun, make auto repair fun and exciting again so here's your update. A uh, couple things we'll talk about a little bit later. I did the 52 point safety inspection and I found a few things that I'm going to recommend, but let's stick with your focus on your main complaint, which is the, uh, we'll start with the headlights. Now, this was an interesting one. Um, I don't expect you to understand this wiring diagram, but I'd just like to show it to you, to show you what I use for the tools to do some accurate diagnosis, and this one was a tricky one. Um, I'll show you why you were smelling that burnt um, electrical smell. So, basically, the common sense approach here is your Headlight switch powers up the multifunction switch, which is your turn signal assembly right here, and that powers up your headlights. So let's go check that one out. Got my uh, charging up your battery there, no charge there, and uh, it was a little bit low. But here's what I like to do to educate my customers because in order to get to that electrical problem, we pretty much have to take apart the dash assembly. And uh, this, it's labor intensive. I'm going to be honest, it's not an inexpensive, inexpensive repair, but uh, needs to be done because you need your headlights and your windshield wipers. So here's the headlight switch right here. Um, I went through all of that, tested all this. That's good. Um, I'll show you what I found out too. It's very interesting. So all all roads were leading to your multi-function switch here, which is your turn signals and hazards. That's very common for this to go out. But upon further troubleshooting, I spent a little extra time on the labor for the troubleshooting, but it more than pays off in this kind of instance because if you'll notice. We'll get down here real close. I have no idea what has been done to this, but it's been some kind of an aftermarket uh, repair or something, maybe a radio at one time or an alarm, hard to say. But what's happening is this switch right here, when you turn this on, this powers up through the turn signal assembly, and this turn signal assembly then provides power to the high beams through the wire harness and to the lights. Well, if you look really close, let's see if we can get this, yeah, that, Christy is where your burning smell is coming from. That thing is torched. So the good news is I'm going to make this repair, put a new connector on there, clean it up, and this will fix, fix your high beam and uh, uh, smell. What, what's going on here is there's so much corrosion in this bad wiring that uh, resistance equals heat, heat equals melting, and there you go. That's how This is how electrical start, fire starts, so I'm glad that we caught this early. So that's the fix for your turn signal assembly. Now let's go back to the wiring diagram. Matter of fact, I probably should have just kept them all in here, but uh, bear with me. I'm learning on this video stuff as we go. But I know you as a customer would like to know where your money's being spent. So <clears throat> that's the fix for your wiring diagram, your uh, headlamps. Now let's talk about these tricky windshield wipers. So by listening to your complaint, that the windshield wipers work in high beam, or I'm sorry, high, high uh, <clears throat> mode most of the time, and sometimes they knock out intermittently. What happens here is this is your main uh, wiper motor right here. I did some wiggle tests. I could not get that to act up, bouncing it all around, things like that. Um, this is your switch, that multifunction switch that we're going to be uh, that where that wiring problem was. So this is working properly. But if you'll notice, again, again, to keep this simple, this red line is what powers your high circuit on your windshield wiper motor. So all roads are pointing towards this. Uh, this is where cars have gotten complex. Even in this 94, I think we, yeah, 1994, they put what they're calling a, uh, let's see if I can get down in there. Uh, excuse my oil smudge mark. That's the real world. But they're calling this bad boy a internal governor wiper washer left it's on the left side of the ashtray so I'm gonna do a little bit more testing to make sure that we don't have a wiring issue but all roads are leading towards this module that needs to be repaired internal governor and the bad news on that is that that I'm gonna grab this here while we're at it 
<clears throat> that module is unfortunately, even with the dash apart like this, I have to get down into there. I know the lighting's not perfect, but as you can see, I'm going to have to take apart that dash even further to get to that. I have no idea what that's going to cost, but uh, we will find out. Um, so I have to go after that as well, too. And then even on your, let's talk about your dash lights a little bit. Um, you had three gremlins with this truck, but uh, we'll get them. That's, that's what I specialize in. Um, not sure if you can see that or not, but where the red powered up lights, or red powered up lines is your illumination lights for the dash. Green is ground. That also gets powered up by the headlamp switch, which tests out good as well too, and you have power here. So I'm assuming that these bulbs are burnt out, and I know it sounds simple to replace dash lights bulbs, but actually it's not. I've got to take out the dash assembly as well too, and those buggers, uh, a lot of the newer digital dashes are easier to pull out, but this one has a mechanical speedometer cable that comes in from the backside. It is a bear to get to, so I have to do that as well too. So that's kind of the update, kind of let you know how things are going. Um, good news, bad news. I mean, the good news is, is that I was able to get to this uh, wiring section here. That could have easily been replaced as a turn signal assembly, but uh, misdiagnosis, but took the time to figure that out. Um, your windshield wiper module, I'm going to figure out the price on that, confirm that's the fix. Fix your uh, dash lights. And then while we're at it, I'm not trying to pick apart your truck, but I really do a thorough inspection. I pull all the wheels because I want you to be safe. And I take the time, there's no inspection for that charge. But I do want you to notice that uh, I'm gonna, really going to highly recommend that we replace your rear brake pad. You see that crack right there? That's a heat crack and that is a safety condition, no-go. So I'm going to recommend rear brakes as well too. <clears throat> boy, that battery charger is a noisy boy. Let's turn this off. Oh, actually I can do it on the other side. <clears throat> Maybe get it up a little bit here. Your, rear, your front brakes are fine. They've got, uh, oh, like about 10 to 15 percent, maybe 25 percent left. It's hard to tell, but uh, definitely keep an eye on those for oil changes. I like to get it to where you use as much of the pad as you can to where it's uh, safe, but you still get your bang, best bang for your buck. But I am going to recommend, I'm not sure the video is going to show this, or if you can even hear the, well, nice little fast car just drove by, but... Uh, yeah, video is going to be tough. But when I checked your front end, I, you, we always wiggle on the front suspension and steering to check for looseness. Your wheel bearings need to be repacked, which are behind here in the hub. There's too much play in there. Yeah, I can move it quite a bit. So I'm going to recommend uh, fix all the electrical. Um, do the rear brake pads. Oh, you know what? Let's go over here. Repack the front bearings. And there's a few other things that, that can wait. Antifreezes uh, could use a flush here soon, but uh, you know, depending on how much you, what your budget is, but for sure, let's get all the electrical gremlins fixed, the rear brake shoes replaced. I might've called them pads, but they're shoes. And then also the front wheel bearings repacked because they're loose and that, that's definitely not a good thing. So. That's pretty much the update for you, Christy, and uh, work on some estimates. But I wanted to give you a story of what's going on with your truck so you're more informed and hopefully you found this video interesting. Okay? All right, Racer Rob, Integrity Auto Care, over and out.